Hello guys and welcome to today's YouTube video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about investing into REITs, also known as Real Estate Investment Trust. I'm going to be talking about how it is that REITs actually work. And then I'm going to be talking about the difference between investing into REITs and investing into real estate. The question of whether it is best to invest into REITs or real estate is a question that has been around forever in the field of finance. And giving an answer to this question is extremely hard to do. However, I will provide some insights into what I think about this question and what I personally think the best investment is. Real estate has historically been known as the best investment you can ever make. And there's a ton of people who's interested in owning real estate and renting it out. However, when it comes to actually buying real estate, there are certain things that hold people back. And one of the things that are holding people back could, for example, be the process of actually writing the contracts between them and the tenants. It could also be the whole process of actually financing the house itself because taking a loan for a investment is a risky move. REIT was established in the 1960s by Congress in order to solve the problem and thereby making real estate investments available for everyone. This gave everyone the opportunity to benefit from income producing real estate assets. The reason why it is possible for anyone now is because now you actually don't have to go out and buy physical real estate anymore, like houses and so on. You can just simply buy a REIT. And when you buy a REIT, you are actually buying a stock. So by buying a stock, you can actually be exposed to the real estate market and reap all of the benefits there is in the real estate market. The stocks for a given REIT is working in the same way as it does with any other stock. The stock can either increase or decrease in value. And also when you have the stock, well then you also have the right to receive dividend payments every single year, which REITs are obligated to pay to the shareholders. So this actually means that you are getting money every single year from owning this REIT stock. All of this may sound really complicated and very different from actually buying a physical real estate asset such as a house. But in fact, it is actually more or less the same thing. Because when you go out and you buy a house, well, then this house can also either increase or decrease in value, just like the stock can. If you are able to rent this real estate asset out, well, then you're also receiving payments every single month from the tenants living there, just like you are receiving dividend payments from the stock that you own in a REIT. Therefore, there are very many similarities between the two. However, there are also some benefits of actually investing into a REIT compared to real estate. And one of the benefits is that you don't actually need to go to the bank and get a loan in order to invest. If you have a hundred dollars in your bank account, well, then you can basically put these hundred dollars into a REIT and already there start receiving the benefits of investing into the real estate market. At the same time, you don't have to make any contracts or do anything around the house in order to produce income. You just put your hundred dollars into the REIT stock and then you basically reap all of the benefits there is from investing into the real estate market. Even though REITs already seem extremely attractive, well then it is super important to understand what a REIT actually is before you start investing into it. And that is what I'm gonna be talking about right now. But before I'm gonna go any further, well then I would highly encourage you to like the video if you actually like the video, and then subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more content like this one in the future. With that being said, well then let's get started talking about what a REIT actually is. When we talk about REITs, it is super important to know that there is two different types of REITs. We have equity REITs and we have mortgage REITs and they are completely different. Equity REITs, well they own a very wide range of property types such as office buildings, apartments, hotels, hospitals, and many others. And equity REITs, well, they are getting most of their revenue from actually renting their property out to tenants. Mortgage REITs, on the other hand, well, they may finance both commercial and residential real estate, and they get most of their revenue through the interest earned on their mortgages or mortgage-backed securities. REITs are operating under a very special set of rules that is set by Congress. And it is these rules that are making REITs very different from any other company. I'm not going to go over all the rules there is regarding REITs, but I am going to be talking about the four most significant rules that are making REITs very different. It is very important that all investors, they do understand these rules before you actually invest into REITs. So the first very REIT specific rule is that 75% of a REIT's total assets must consist of real estate mortgages, cash or government bonds. What it essentially means is that the majority of a REIT's actual assets is placed within the real estate market, 
which is exactly what we want as investors if we want to be a part of the real estate market without actually physically buying real estate property. The second REIT specific rule is that at least 75% of a REIT's annual income must be derived from real estate. What this rule essentially means for us as investors is that REITs, when well, they are basically obligated to receive the majority of their income from the real estate market. So basically, it is not enough for REITs to only own property, they must also be able to make money with the property that they actually own. The third REIT specific rule is that a REIT cannot be a company that is only owned by a few people. There may be no more than five people owning 50% of a REIT. So the ownership of REITs needs to be diversified amongst many shareholders. It is also a requirement that there are at least 100 different shareholders in a REIT. What this essentially means is that a REIT cannot be held by a few people. It needs to be owned by very many people instead of only one or two. And that is also a good thing for us as shareholders because it means that the power and so on within the company is actually spread amongst other people and many other people instead of belonging to a few people. And that is most likely also a very good thing and a thing that you should look for as an investor as well. The fourth rule and the most important rule for all of us as investors is that 90% of the REIT's total taxable income must be distributed to all shareholders in the form of dividend payments. This is the rule that makes REITs extremely interesting and very attractive for us as investors because it essentially means that 90% of what they are earning that is being classified as taxable income needs to be distributed to the shareholders, meaning you and I, if we own REIT stocks. And that is how REITs are able to pay out a very large amount of dividends that basically resemble when you own a property and you receive the cash flow from the tenant living there. Therefore, a REIT is able to both increase and decrease in value and at the same time, they are able to pay very large amount of dividends to the shareholders every single year because they are obligated to do so. The reason why it is possible for REITs to pay out 90% of their total taxable income to the shareholders in the form of dividends is because when you are being classified as a REIT and you thereby meet all of the requirements set by Congress, well then you are basically tax exempt, which actually means that you are paying no corporate tax on your earnings. So therefore the REITs are basically paying no taxes. Instead, they are distributing all of it to the shareholders. The regulations there are around REITs, well, they have changed a lot since they were implemented in the 1960s by Congress. However, the incentive and the motive for inventing REITs still holds today, namely that everyone should be able to invest and grant the benefits of real estate investing. Thus, it can be said that REITs are companies that by law are obligated to have the majority of their assets within the real estate market and at the same time they are also obligated to have the majority of their income come from the real estate market as well. Therefore does the value of REITs also depend on very many of the same variables as the real estate market is depending on and at the same time well, then REITs are also paying very high dividends which is very similar to getting rent from your tenants living in your real estate houses. Due to all of the laws that the REITs have to follow well then they are very very closely linked to the real estate market and they are very depending on the real estate market and the factors that does have an impact on the value of real estate. However, what makes REITs very different is that you don't need a large upfront investment in order to reap the benefits of real estate investing. I'm now going to mention a few REITs that I'm personally invested in in order to give you guys some inspiration into what, what you can look into and maybe invest into yourself if you do find REITs interesting. The first REIT that I would highly recommend you to look more into is called Royalty Income Corp. This REIT owns more than 11,000 real estate assets that is placed within 70 different sectors. So it is a very, very diversified REIT that does own a lot of real estate assets. And if we do look at the performance of the stock, well, then we basically see that they're down by 4.38% year to date. Of course, it is not the greatest performance, but when you're taking everything that has happened this year into consideration and you think about the interest rates and so on, well, then it's actually not that bad at all. If we look at the dividend payment for this company, well, then we basically see that they're paying 4.35% in dividends every single year, which is actually extremely high. So that was my first example of the read that I would highly encourage you to look more into. The second read that I would highly recommend you to look more into is actually not a read per se, 
it is an index that basically follows the real estate market. So by investing into this index, well, then you're basically getting all of the benefits there is in the real estate market without having to do any research or much work by yourself. You are basically putting your money into this index and well, then they're doing all the work for you. If we look at the performance of this ETF, well, then we see that year to date, it is down by almost 18% which is quite a lot. However, the real estate market has been hit overall quite hard by the increase in the interest rate and in the inflation. Therefore, I wouldn't think too much about these numbers, but maybe see it as a good buying opportunity. That was basically my two examples of REITs that I would highly recommend you to look further into. And that was all I had in today's video about how REITs are working and what a REIT actually is. If you liked today's video, then please press the like button below the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one in the future. See you in the next one.